Like, Alex Perez is a fucking monster. You don't really think that you'd beat him in a boxing match, right? 1,000% I would beat him. Jake Paul is in the news, and I think he's totally lost it. Talking about Alex Pereira, KSI, in his fight with Mike Tyson. Just overall, so much delusion. It's been a while since I caught up with any of the Paul brothers, so here we are. Jake Paul went on a live stream with Aiden Ross to talk about a bunch of things. And I first want to talk about some of his comments about Alex Pereira. Now, Jake Paul has called out Alex now a few times, I believe, after his fight with Mike Perry. He also called him out. And I think this this is probably one of the most ridiculous callouts, and you have to hear his reasoning. Alex Perez is a fucking monster. You don't really think that you'd beat him in a boxing match, right? One thousand percent, I would beat him. That's the thing is, Roundtree actually kind of exposed that he doesn't have a high volume output. He doesn't like body shots. The reason Pereira doesn't have high volume is because each shot he lands is like an absolute nuclear weapon. Like it just wipes dudes out. And Alex Pereira, it's not that he necessarily has a low output. He just sets up a lot of shots, right? Like he uses his jab, which is especially good for boxing, and really will try to set up some of his power shots like if he touches you you are going to another universe he, he has holes right i mean Roundtree rocked him, hurt him a couple of times to the body, but didn't follow up on it. For Jake Paul to criticize anybody for having holes in their game, after getting rocked by a pretty much retired Tyron Woodley, going to a decision with a Nate Diaz who clearly wasn't taking that fight seriously, and losing to Tommy Fury. This is the guy that's going to criticize the UFC light heavyweight champion for having holes in his game. Pressure's on him, you know, if he can find his way out of the ufc contract like nate nate diaz did and then eventually him and i can talk i love how jake paul says like the pressure is on alex burr to get out of his ufc contract as if jake paul is some massive pay-per-view star here like didn't jake paul's last fight against mike perry sell less than 100k pay-per-views i guarantee you ufc 307 outsold most of jake paul's pay-per-views trust me if the pay-per-view numbers were that high we would hear about them those things would get reported and it's just ridiculous too because you know he's only calling out alex because he knows Alex cannot get out of his UFC contract. And I just saw this online, guys. Like, keep in mind, when Alex Pereira was born, Jake Paul's next opponent, Mike Tyson, was 28 and 0. Alex Pereira is 37 years old, guys. That is how ridiculous this is. Like, put that into perspective. We've even seen Alex Pereira spar a legit professional boxer, so I don't think Jake Paul wants any of that. But Jake Paul also talked about the KSI fight, this fantasy fight that, let's be real, is probably never going to happen. I've talked about this before. And KSI has been having it rough, right? Let's not lie. But things might have just brightened up for him because Jake Paul has decided to lower his weight offer for the fight and here's what he had to say. KSI, you want 185, I want 200. Mr. B said, why don't we just meet in the middle? I'm down. 192.5. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of either guy, right? And I'm saying this to say that I am coming at this completely unbiased. As someone that also does want to see this fight, I think that 185 to 190 is fair. Any weight between there. KSI is kind of a smaller guy, and Jake Paul isn't as big as he seems. He's literally weighed like 183 and 185 before. So, like, he can make the weight. I think maybe a 187, 190 is fair. Even 185, I think, is more than fair, too. And I think this fight needs to happen. I'd much rather see this fight than the Mike Tyson fight. But sadly, we may never see this fight right and honestly that's just tough to hear i guess you could say we're really in the thick of it but Jake Paul went on to talk about this Mike Tyson fight, and this fight has completely flew under the radar. This fight is happening in a month, guys. Like, seriously, there was a time where I felt like this fight had a lot of hype, but not anymore. Like, nobody is talking about this thing, despite Aiden Ross literally glazing Jake Paul for this fight. Guys, you can see I'm sucking his dick than I am. Look, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care. Yeah. So... It feels good. It legit feels like nobody cares, right? Maybe this energy will change once we get to fight week. But I think if you ask casual people about this fight, a lot of the reaction you see is, wait, that fight's still happening? I thought it got canceled. I think the fight getting canceled and Mike Tyson getting injured really took a lot of the wind out of the sails of this fight. Mike Tyson legit went to the hospital because he was unfit to fight on that date. I genuinely want to see a doctor come out, put his reputation on the line and say, yeah, Mike Tyson can fight. He's totally healthy. Like, we have not seen this yet. And that is scary, right? There's a reason we have not seen this because that is the biggest criticism about this fight right is that like everybody thinks mike tyson's unfit there's an easy way to prove that why aren't they proving it let that sink in and i think my problem with this fight is stylistically look like when logan paul fought floyd mayweather that was a completely different thing i understood that fight going to a decision but i don't think this fight is going to a decision guys unless there's some sort of pre-agreement that none of these guys are going to go hard like if they're both going 100 percent mike tyson's getting knocked out even if mike tyson is going 100 and jake paul isn't he's gonna get knocked out and i'll explain why yes mike tyson has 
has that power where if he connects against Jake Paul, he's gonna knock out Jake Paul, of course. But the problem is reaching him, right? And it's not only just reaching him, I would feel a lot more confident if Mike Tyson was a bigger guy. But Jake Paul is the bigger guy. He is taller. Jake Paul has the reach advantage. And here's what I think is going to happen. I think Jake Paul is going to go into this fight saying, let me let it go to a decision, this and that. I think Mike Tyson eventually is going to get really aggressive trying to knock out Jake Paul. And because Mike Tyson is shorter, he's gonna have to really get into range to land a shot on Jake Paul, making Jake uncomfortable. And I think Jake's gonna realize, look, if I don't do something, I'm getting knocked out because he is so, being so aggressive. And I see because of the reflexes being slow from Mike Tyson, I think Mike Tyson's gonna get hit with something and I think he's gonna go down. I don't think this is going to be a fun fight at all, guys. Trust me. If you guys watch the Evander Holyfield and Vitor Belfort fight that happened a few years ago, that's the vibes I get from this fight. Like, I think it's going to be just like that. I'm calling it right now and I've never been so confident in something in my life. If it doesn't happen that way, then I believe that there was some sort of pre-planned agreement before that. And I would love to see nothing more than this fight to once again go up in smoke. I love Mike Tyson, so I feel bad saying it for him, but Jake Paul is just like, I, I just can't believe this guy. Hell, he's too afraid to even fight KSI at a normal weight. Like, come on, dude. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hit the subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Guys, you guys are the best fan base in MMA, and I'll see you guys in the next one.